I want to continue the message that we started last week. Strive to enter the rest. This is actually from the book of Hebrews. And I told you the reason why I want to bring this message, because we are studying the book of Hebrews. So as we study these books every now and then, I will bring one or two messages actually from the book of Hebrews. It's a fascinating book, rich in doctrine, a lot of promises. It's a book that challenges every person. Amen. So the author is actually asking the people to come and enter the rest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11, we read, Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. Amen. Adhuvandarum. Anisarna kedinde samadr shtandatina thonam. Veera adhiri kedinde nama swasthadil praveshikyuan ulsahikya. Amen. I gave you the introduction to the book of Hebrews last week. I also gave you a kind of a background about this particular verse and this concept of entering into the rest. You know, even if you listen to the, the songs we sung this morning, and even in the introduction, we heard about people going through difficult situation. In the middle of our difficult situation, God gives us the grace and the rest. You know, that's the beauty of Christian life. Amen. Whatever that you and I face, Whatever the turbulence that you and I face, God gives us rest and peace in the middle of it. Jesus invited people. He said, if you are laboring, carrying heavy burden, you come to me and I will give you rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we also saw that this concept of rest was in the Old Testament. God told the people of Israel, six days you shall work and the seventh day you shall rest. It is also compared to their actually entering into the promised land. It's all, all of these things were a shadow of a rest that will come to the children of God in the future. Amen. So today, when you made a covenant with Jesus, when you gave your life to Christ, when you decided to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, when your sins are forgiven, you have actually in one sense entered into a rest. But it is progressive. You are continuing in that rest. And one day in the future, we will enter into that rest that God has really promised. Praise God. And we also looked at the warnings. We were asked to learn lessons from the life of people of Israel. Amen. We saw when they came very close to the promised land, they came to the edge of the promised land, they sent out the spies to spy the land. And they gave the report. These, these people came back. After scouting the land, they came back and they said, all of them with different kinds of opinions. Only two people said, hey, this is nothing. This will be like a piece of cake. But the rest of the people said, no, we are like grasshoppers. They will have us for lunch. But these two people said, we will have them for lunch. Amen. We will defeat them. Because God is on our side and the promise is on our side. Amen. Amen. But they didn't want to believe. They doubted God. Even after seeing how God has done so many things for them. 
You know, it's possible that you and I could speak about so many things what God has done for you. God saved you from your sins. God gave you the peace in your heart. You know, that's called, you, are, you got peace with God. But you still don't enjoy the peace of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants us to enjoy this peace, this rest. So God let them wander in the wilderness 40 years. And all those who disbelieved, God said, you will never enter the promised land. And the history tells us that all those people about 20 years of age, they all wandered 40 years. They all died. Only two people out of that group actually entered the promised land. That is Joshua and Caleb. And of course, you see their offsprings, their children, the next generation also entered the promised land. And the author in the book of Hebrews is using that incident as a warning and warning God's people, make sure that you don't go into disbelieving God and in turn disobeying God and forfeit your rest God has prepared for you. Praise God. So we are learning lessons from that. Amen. So one of the things that we have seen there, they did not mix the promise with faith. So there's something they believed, but they didn't trust. Amen. These two things should go together. So what happens to us is actually, you and I can sit here intellectually believing so many things. Intellectually believing that God is great. We just sang, you do miracles, so great. And you are not seeing one miracle happening in your life. I'm not talking probably of raising somebody from the dead. If that is what God wants you to do, that's fine. But miracles in daily life. Daily challenges. You want to see, how many of you are allowed to see miracles happening in your life? Yes, we are simply buying time. We are buying more time. You say, oh, this is going to happen tomorrow. Next week, it's going to happen. You know, and we are buying time. We are just going. And life is just taking different turns. Excitement is just, just dwindling down. But I want to, you know, we need to really understand why things are not happening. We are not mixing it with faith. You know, faith is not mixed with trust. That's exactly what happened to the people of Israel. They had seen how God delivered them from, the, from Israel, from, from the bondage of Egypt. They saw 10 plagues. They saw this miraculous delivery. They saw crossing of Red Sea. They saw... God providing for the manna from heaven and the water from the flint rock. God gave all these things. There was shade during the daytime and there was this pillar of cloud and pillar of light. God provided for them. Forty years they went through, you know, the wilderness journey. God was there, but still they did not believe that God could take them to the promised land. Ask us this question. Do I really trust God? Yes, I believe things, but I don't trust God. There's a big difference believing something and trusting God. If that's an issue in our lives, I pray as you listen to this sermon this morning, we should ask God, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to just, just share with you, uh, look at Hebrews 4 verse 2. It says, we receive the same promises as those people in the wilderness. Now the Hebrew writer is telling you that the same promise God gave to the people of Israel about a rest. That same rest, the promise of rest is given to you and me too. Amen. It's not just for the people of Israel in the wilderness, but the same promise is given to you. 
We will see the same promise as the people in the wilderness. But the promises didn't do them a bit of good because they did not receive the promise with faith. Amen. If God promised something to you, we should have faith that God is able to deliver it. Amen. Amen. You know, he living a life of rest is very important. You know, Hudson Taylor, who went to, you know, when we recently went to China, I was really thinking about a missionary that actually went into that country who founded the China Inland Mission, Hudson Taylor. He faced so much of persecutions. You know, after some time when the, the communist government took over China, you have seen that the missionaries are not permitted to go there anymore. They were asked to leave the country. So it has all impacted the China Inland Mission, all those things. Now, Hudson Taylor's son gives a testimony about his own father. Very interesting. And this is what he said, and I quote for you. It's a day and night. This was his secret. He was talking about his father's secret. This was his secret. Quote, Just to roll the burden onto the Lord. This was his secret. Amen. So here is a son talking about a father. You know, the secret of my dad was, my dad always rolled his problem on to the Lord. Amen. I, I'm just waiting for a day when my children will say that testimony about me. You know, I don't know. And then the my dad is buying a panic. He will do you with such a panic fellow. He just walk in here and there and everything is troublesome for him. Then, no, no, no. They want to see, our children want to see parents trusting in God, rolling all their problems onto the Lord and say, Lord, I'm resting because you're carrying me. Hallelujah. And, and this, is, this, is, this is how he goes on to say. Frequently those who were those who, were, those who were wakeful in the little house at Chinkiang might hear at two or three in the morning. For Avila Yangada Vitil, Chinkiang and the Stalatra Kuchi Vitil, Javile Rando, Munumaniko, Unamarik in the Alagil Kelkan Gari in the Uri Karibunda. You know, uh, they hear the soft refrain of Mr. Taylor's favorite hymn. Jesus, I'm resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. Amen. Jesus, I'm resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. Kathavi, Yeshue, Niyarana, Niyandana, Yandule, Yandi, Arivil, Nyan Visramikya. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm resting in you. I'm simply resting in you. What a testimony. Amen. He had learned that for him. This is son saying, he had learned for him. Only one life was possible. Just that blessed life of resting and rejoicing in the Lord under all circumstances. While he dealt with difficulties inward and outward, great and small. Agatheim, Porathim, Yutham, Cherdum, Veluva, Yutham, and the Appan Nereton did in the Samayatum, and the Appan and Narathea, what Takariwana, Yeshue, Nanangil Visarvikino. Those are the things, those are the people who entered the rest. In the Ravali Vidikin, the Yumakla. Those of you sitting here this morning, I don't know what is plaguing your mind this morning. I don't know if it is financial challenges that you are, you are faced with this morning. Children, I don't know if there's educational challenges that is plaguing your heart this morning. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if it is some, a diagnosis that you received, you know, the other day when you went to the doctor. I don't know if something that concerns you this morning. I don't know what plaguing your mind. What is causing you this so much of pain? I have a word for you from the Lord. Come on, rest yourself in the Lord. 
Jesus said, cast your burden unto me. Amen. Cast your burden unto the Lord and he will sustain you. Ninda paaram. Ahodamel vekiga avandane endiyum. If you have brought your burden this morning, Holy Spirit has a word for you this morning. Cast it unto the Lord. And you walk out from this place today. I want you to go free this morning. Young man, as you walk away from this church today, I want you to go walk free today, knowing that God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in control. God is still on the throne. Can I hear an Amen. Hallelujah. Would you put your hands up and say, thank you. Hallelujah. God is in control of every situation. Nothing is impossible with my God. Whatever that is plaguing your mind this morning, I want you to know that he wants you to enter the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I have to confess the fact that there are times in my own personal life, I could be a preacher talking to you from the pulpit here, but there are seasons in my life, there are times in my life, I was not able to roll my burdens onto the Lord, but I was carrying it myself. It was eating me alive day and night. Amen. Praise God. But that's not the life God has called us. Jesus said, I will give you rest. He didn't say, I'm going to give you money. Money is not going to give you the rest that you really need. Amen. Amen. In the middle of even your sickness, even in the middle of your loss, you can still be at peace. You, you all know that uh, famous song of Horatio Spafford. We all sing it all the time. You all know this the background story when his children were dead in a shipwreck as he was going through Atlantic maybe to meet the to get the dead body you know God gave him a song when peace like a river attended my when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever Whatever happens in your life, he has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Praise God. Whatever be my lot, and the hours the end and the eye of Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I may not become rich and famous. I may not recover everything. But he has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's a testimony of somebody who has entered the rest. This is called the peace of God. Amen. You have peace with God. But do you have the peace of God? Yes, the Day to day life enjoy you and carry you Are you able to enjoy the peace of God in your daily life, regardless of what happens in your life? I have the peace of God. Hallelujah. That rest the Lord is asking us to enter. See, when you read the chapter. Look at, let's, let's come to chapter 4. Okay. Let's read 3, 4, and 5. Yes. 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 Amen. Now, we who have believed enter the rest, just as God has said. So I declared on my, declared on all, in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For some were 
he has spoken about the seventh day in these words on the seventh day god rested from all his works verse 5 and again in the passage about he says they shall never enter my rest amen so we're going to look at the nature of this rest we see we, we, we hear you know the author speaks so much things about the rest here the kind of rest god who wants to give it to us he has says the lord is saying my rest so the first observation that we need to make is this rest is a divine rest amen it's a divine rest hallelujah see twice you see he quotes from psalms 95 verse 11 they shall never enter my rest hallelujah amen hallelujah see god is telling that this is my rest that i'm giving to you praise god see this is not some kind of of a of a relaxation god is giving us from some of the tensions that you and i are facing in life but a rest that is qualitatively same rest god enjoys his personal rest that he shares with us amen mind-mood-altering drugs you are taking and you feel relaxed for no god is telling you this is my own rest the rest that i'm enjoying i'm giving it to you praise the god hallelujah the rest that god is giving you is a divine rest amen it's a divine rest hallelujah you know you can really think about it you know just think about the highest person that you can do let's say if the king we don't have so many kings here today the kings all their prime ministers that are presidents of great nations they invite you to spend a day with them or this they want they, they go to their own retirement place or retreat place and they ask you to join them you are enjoying the rest that they are enjoying Amen. Our Anupavikina, our Anupavikina, Visramatre Kana, Namakur invitation get here again. Amen. These are all human beings you are talking about here. But the God is telling you, I'm talking about something very different. Amen. Kala Vastam Armor taken in the plan Marilla. Praise God. Mechanical trouble and the plane Amen. Nothing can thwart the plan of God. Plan of God will succeed. And God said, that is the rest that I'm extending to you. The divine rest God is offering to us. Hallelujah. Come on, enter that rest. Adivya Visramam. Praise God. Look at chapter 4, verse 3. Moon and Alam Waking Watch, you know, right? Business is where I am, I'm a loss of real privacy. You know, Log Stabil Tingle, Provertical Tear in the Boy Sashamum. Our in the Sustail Privacy Kaila in the Yan and the Covatil, I really say the winner. Yes, I really say the Kinovello. Aaron and Nalil, they even then the Sagala Provertical in the Nibertanai in the Aaron Nal Necruzer or read at the Paranirikino. Okay, now. We're looking at the nature of the rest. So the first thing that we noticed there, that this was a divine rest. And the same verse, or same verses of scripture in chapter 4, the author is actually telling us about God resting after creating the cosmos. Amen. So you are going to call this rest a cosmic rest rest is it a problem jigamaya or with samoa amen praise god see three verses and a verse three and a second part and, and verse four the author further reveals the character of this rest by relating it to the rest god entered when he finished creating this universe Amen. It's a cosmic rest. God is calling you to come. And I, I think I've mentioned here 
last Sunday or maybe during the Bible study time. All other days when God created first day, second day, third day, up to sixth day, you would see what, what is written there. It was morning and evening the first day. Sandhiai, Vishasumai, Onnandavasam. Then again it says morning and evening the second day. Then it goes on to say morning and evening the third day. It goes on to say, but when it comes here, you don't read it that way. Okay? You don't read it that way. So God entering into that rest. And it does not say morning and evening. That means that rest is still continuing. Amen. Devam praveshicha aswastala eram devasam innum tudarnon dirikigya. Amen. That seventh day is still continuing. The rest is still continuing. That's the reason the author is telling you that rest is still available. You and I can enter that rest. Amen. Aswastala innum tudarnon dirikigya. And you and I can go into that rest. So it's, it's a divine rest. You also see this is a cosmic rest. Amen. And this is also an ideal rest. Ideal rest really means Praise God. Hallelujah. Why do we say this is the most ideal rest that we can think about? You know, Job says in chapter 38 verse 7. Maybe 6 and 7 you can read. Alright, I'll read uh, this. Certainly you will know that who came up with the blueprints and the measurements. How was its foundation poured? And who set the cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in choruses and all the angels shouted praise. Amen. Prabhada Darchantrangal Omnicha Koshi Chullasikim Deyotrmarellam Sando Shicha Anandikin Chedavat. So they were echoing the joy of the Creator as He carried it into the Sabbath rest. Amen. He Sabbath Tileka, Sabbath in the Visramatileka, Kartau Poya Paul, He Sustipul on Daila, while He is Sando Shovaitana, Kartau Visramatileka Poya. Amen. So this is the most joyful rest that is available for us. That's the reason it's an ideal rest. Amen. There's joy in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be at peace in the middle of a storm. The most satisfying. Praise God. Hallelujah. That you would see this is also the most satisfying rest. It's not only the most exciting, more joyful rest, but this is also the most satisfying rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why I say it's a more satisfying rest? We need to come back to the creation story. We saw in the creation story from the book of Job that all the angels in heaven were so jubilant. They were joyful as the creator was creating. It's the joy of the Creator. Amen. As He was creating the universe, that joy was there. It was on the faces of the angels. Now that same joy, He has entered into the rest. And that same joy is available to you. If you can enter into that just, you can be joyful. And also it's a more satisfying thing because you can turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to look at a couple of verses here. Look at verse 4. Chapter 1 verse 4. Someone read. God saw the light was good. Alright. Then look at verse 12. Bumi ilna pullum adadaram bittulla phalangai ke na vrikshangalam mula chivano 
നല്ലതെന്ന് ദൈവം കണ്ടു is again talking about the green things and god saw it was good all right okay verse 18 ദൈവം അവയെ ആകാശ വിദാനത്തിൽ നിർത്തി നല്ലതെന്ന് ദൈവം കണ്ടു is talking about the celestial uh lights and he saw the firmament and god saw it was good all right look at 25 ഇങ്ങനെ ദൈവം അതുതരം കാട്ടുമൃഗങ്ങളെയും അതുതരം കന്നുകാലികളെയും അതുതരം ഭൂചര ജന്തുക്കളെയും ഉണ്ടാക്കി നല്ലത് എന്ന് ദൈവം കണ്ടു അങ്ങനെ സംഭവിച്ചു താൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയതിനെയൊക്കെ ദൈവം നോക്കി അത് എത്രയും നല്ലത് എന്ന് കണ്ടു സന്ധ്യയായി ഉഷസായി ആറാം ദിവസം ഓക്കേ ഈവൻ ഓൺ ദി സിക്സ് ഡേ വെൻ ഹി ലുക്ഡ് അറ്റ് एवरीथिंग दैट ही हैज मेड एंड गॉड सॉ इट वाज गुड मॉर्निंग एंड इवनिंग द सिक्स डे आमेन एवरी टाइम गॉड क्रिएटेड मेड समथिंग और गॉड क्रिएटेड समथिंग गॉड लुक्ड एट इट स्टेड बैक एंड ही सेड इट वाज गुड प्रेज गॉड നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിച്ച് നോക്കിക്കു tambura idinella oru vaakku kondu ingane paranju he just call and things came into existence amen so even after you know calling the final star into existence maybe millions of light years away anega deshalaksham prakashu varshangal kapprathu thande avasanathe starine tambura vanavihayasil thookiyechu and he kind of can not only really that those those kind of uh, uh, celestial uh, light sources but on the other side he even probably maybe gave a small touch to the firefly you know our minnamin ing nu parayum adinde agathu vannunde cheriya light ekka tambaram pidipichu vecha he stayed back and said it's good amen adu oru santrupti aado adu oru joy it's a satisfying thing and then what happened he entered into rest on the seventh day and he never said on the seventh day morning and evening the seventh day seventh day is still continuing yeram divasam innum thodarnondirikkya and he is asking you to come enter my rest ningal endi irikkava come enter this rest this is the most satisfied i am satisfied with what i made amen i am satisfied with everything and i look at everything that i made i say it is good enter that life of satisfaction if that is an issue with you today you never satisfied anything that you have to so this morning those of you you know those children who went to sunday school we were studying about greed for the past so many weeks greed it's an enemy that comes against our soul never satisfied with whatever you have that's where greed comes from but once you enter this rest you have the satisfaction that god enjoys he wants to give it to you namada yudhale ettom veliya satisfaction nu parannu ariyo god is on my side if god is for me who can be against devu enikku anugulam engil pradigulam aare hallelujah my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory and then the next thing next observation about this ideal rest is actually this is a working rest don't get the don't get the impression that god after creating this universe went into his easy chair armchair put his legs up and he is doing nothing now no even while he is enjoying this this rest this satisfaction god is at work see even when you work there is still that peace and tranquility that you can enjoy amen listen li- listen here what john says in john chapter 5 verse 17 where jesus john write what jesus says here you can read that for me john gospel chapter 5 verse 17 my father is always at his work to this very day and i too am working amen hallelujah yesu avaroda ende 
പിതാവ് ഇന്ന് വരെയും പ്രവർത്തിക്കുന്നു മൈ ഫാദർ ഈസ് വർക്കിംഗ് ടിൽ ടുഡേ നൗ വെൻ യു സെഡ് സെവന്ത് ഡേ ആഫ്റ്റർ ഫിനിഷിംഗ് ദി വർക്ക് ഹി എൻ്റർ ദി റെസ്റ്റ് ദെൻ ദിസ് ഷുഡ് ബി എ കോൺട്രഡിക്ഷൻ after many thousands of years now jesus is telling my father is at work till today god is at work and he says me i am also is working i am i have entered the rest god has entered the work but god is still working so this is a rest that continue to work hallelujah amen നിശ്ചലമായിരിക്കുന്ന ജോലി അത് വെറുതെ ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സ്ട്രെസ്റ്റ് അല്ലത് ദിസ് ഇൻ ദ റെസ്റ്റ് യു ആർ വർക്കിംഗ് വൈൽ വർക്കിംഗ് യു ആർ അറ്റ് റെസ്റ്റ് ജി ഹെ ദാറ്റ് സോ ഇൻ റെസ്റ്റ് യു ആർ വർക്കിംഗ് ഇൻ വർക്കിംഗ് യു ആർ അറ്റ് റെസ്റ്റ് ഐ മീൻ വാട്ട് ഹൗസ് ഡു യു നീഡ് ഐ മീൻ യു ആർ ഇൻ ദ മിഡിൽ ഓഫ് യുവർ ജോബ് യു ആർ ഗോയിങ് സ്ട്രഗ്ലിങ് ദിസ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ബട്ട് യു കെൻ ബി അറ്റ് റെസ്റ്റ് ഐ മീൻ വെൻ യു ആർ അറ്റ് റെസ്റ്റ് യു ആർ ഓൾസോ വർക്കിംഗ് that's a beauty of this rest that god has given us hallelujah and then another aspect of this rest is actually this rest is available right now he's not telling you i'm going to give you a rest maybe thousand years when you die i'll give you a rest but well, that's a different aspect of rest but you can enter this rest right now so it's a divine rest it's a joyful rest it's a satisfying rest leo e rest namaki pond it's available right now hallelujah how do you hear it it's it's us those who believe that enter that rest amen it's us who believe that we enter this rest right now the rest is available amen now in christ we have entered the rest and we are entering our rest every day we enter the rest and we are entering our rest nammal adinathu keri daily keri kondirikkya we are entering this the more you trust the more you rest amen the more see that's how it is is proportionate to how much you are willing to trust god you're going to rest more praise god praise god orikkalle oru manushan parnu see my healing you know healing gift that i received i can heal common cold and flu and little shoulder pain here and there but there may be other people who praise and cancer get healed heart attack gets healed and the whole brain brain tumors will go away but my faith is only small enough that i can only take care of some flu or fever or something like it all has to do with your trust amen how far are you willing to trust god how far your trust will take you odi idu choyke nammada vishwasam odam irundu endinolla devathinu ullum what all god can do for you just think about it how far god will go just think about oh, i don't think god can take care of this one god can take care of this one you know some children sometimes say passing i can never study i cannot remember anything you know one of my remedy for that is one of the remedies that i give them is actually start memorizing scriptures you would see a marked difference in the way you study you see allow god's word to be retained in your brain you would see a big change in your memory and your analytical skills you would see a marked difference praise god the more god's word rests in you in your, in your life you would see a big difference in your life so it's, it's proportionate how much are you willing to trust god hallelujah so this rest is available for us today amen now the author is going here to talk a little bit further about it look at chapter 4 verse 6 so he is going to emphasize on that particular aspect that rest is available so we'll read two three verses and we'll close here look at verse 6 chapter 4 verse 6 everybody അതുകൊണ്ട് ചിലർ അതിൽ പ്രവേശിപ്പാൻ ഇടശേഷിച്ചിരിക്കുകയാലും മുമ്പേ സദ്ധ്വർധ്വാനം കേട്ടവർ അനുസരണക്കേട് നിമിത്തം പ്രവേശിക്കാതെ പോകുകയാലും ഇത്ര കാലത്തിന് ശേഷം ദാവീദ് മുഖാന്തിരം ഇന്ന് അവന്റെ ശബ്ദം കേൾക്കുന്നുവെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയം കഠിനമാക്കരുത് എന്ന് മുമ്പേ പറഞ്ഞത് 
I think there are four times in this chapter, he is telling you the rest is available. So this is the first occurrence of that. And John Namata, I would have looked at it, 4 verse 6. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed them did not go in because of their disobedience, Panda Sadhu Atwanage Aketa Raina the Kaira Dinadunda, the rest is still available for you. That's the first occurrence of that. Amen. Praise God. And now a second time. This is probably you can say six hundred years later. Almost six hundred years later. Look at verse seven. Four verse seven. Itra Galatil Sesham Davi the Mukandiram in the Sabdan Kelkunu Engel, Ningle de Kradi and Kadina Marker in the Numbe Parna de Bole, in the Enur Devasam Pindi in this chase. I mean, God again said a certain day, call it today. In the Enur Devasam, okay? Today. This he did when a long time after he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. 600 years later, that rest is available for us. That's the second time he is saying the rest is of it. Today, that today is still continuing. David today, and today that that today also that today is continuing. Amen. Even now that today is continuing. Look at look at again verse 8. Look at again verse 8. For if Joshua had given them rest, amen, he, Joshua took them to the promised land, right? And you and I say, oh, that's the rest, right? But the truth is, he led them to the promised land, but they never enjoyed the rest. Amen. You can go to the promised land, and never enjoy the rest. So Joshua actually literally took them to the promised land, but the rest they never enjoyed. He could not give them the rest. Amen. So if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. So they never entered that rest is still available. That's the reason he's talking through David another day. You know the word for Joshua and Jesus are exactly the same in Greek. Jesus and Joshua are the same. So Jesus was named after Joshua. So Amma Pumari Yeshu ne veeru thoda sathi marjya paneni mathile Joshua ne veer ar gor thoda. So we have a lot of Joshuas here. You are named after the Old Testament Joshua. When Jesus' parents also was given him that name, Joshua. It is actually referring to the Joshua. So, but he was called Jesus. So Jesus, Jesus and Yeshua and, and, and Joshua, they both, Jesus are both the same. So the Old Testament Jesus or Old Testament G Joshua led the followers to the promised land of Canaan. But that was, the, that was not the real rest, but it was only a type. But many years later came another Joshua called Jesus. Amen. Jesus, the son of none, who is Joshua, could not take them to the promised rest. But Jesus, the son of God, was able to take us into the promised rest. Hallelujah. 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 Now, 1,000 years later, you would see in chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. We'll read and we'll close here. Ageal. Ageal, David and the Janathana, or Sabathanabum, Sashi Chirikino. Yes. David and the Provertical Lenapole, Avenda Sosadil, Pravesi Chavantanum, Tanda Provertical Never the Naiturno. Therefore, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest, also rests from their works just as God did from his. No, thousand years later, the Hebrew writer, writer of the Hebrews is telling that rest is still available. Now strive to enter the rest. And I will encourage you to go home and read verses 14 onwards 
it really speaks about how you and I can enter that rest. It is asking you to stay focused on that rest, strive to enter that rest. It is also telling you the best way you enter that rest is through the Word of God. Daivatinda Vadanam, Jeevanam, Chaidanuladam, Idivai Taliullah, Edu Walina Katilam, Murcheuladam. Though the Lord, the Lord, you know, use, allow God's Word to have a place in your life. That's the best way you and I will enter that rest. Give God's Word an importance in your life. So this morning, if you are not enjoying the peace of God, you have peace with God, but you don't have the peace of God. You're worried every time. Every situation, you become so panicked. You become so stressed out. That's not how God's children should be living their lives. Whether you are a young child, old person, you're a pastor or a lay person, you're not called to live a stressful life. You're called to enter into a peace with God and rest with God. Our rest is available for you today. It was available for people of Israel. It was available during the days, 600 years later, during the time of David. It was available a thousand years later. For us, it is still available. Today, Come on. This morning, cast your burden to the Lord, and He will sustain you. I want to say a prayer for you this morning. I know I didn't preach a revival message this morning, but something the Lord has really put into my heart. Maybe some of you are sitting here. You're like a walking time bomb. You're like a civil war. You're like a volcano. There's so much of things in your heart. Outside you look so good, but deep inside you're troubled. The Lord is asking you, enter that rest. Cast your burden. I promise you that I will take care of you. But you are still carrying it. Come on, roll it over to me. I will take care of you. I want to say a prayer for you because I'm led by the Holy Spirit this morning to say this prayer. I know the time is gone, but just one moment here. I'm troubled here about something this morning. I'm not willing to share that to any person. But deep in my heart, there's so much of struggle going on. So much of stress in my heart. But the Lord is telling you, come on, I will give you rest. It's a divine rest. It's a joyful rest. It's a satisfying rest. It's a, it's a rest that God himself enjoys. Come and be with me. You can be at work and still enjoy the rest. You can be resting and still be working. That's the rest God is offering you. Come. And you promise today that you will go to God's word and you will submit to God's word. And this is how you enter into that rest every single day. If you are that person with all eyes closed, whether you're a young child, student, older person, doesn't matter. Put your hands up. Just, I want, that, I want to enjoy that rest. Put your hands. I see many hands here. Just put that hand up. I want to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just declare to your people what you laid upon my heart. I'm praying for these brothers and sisters, these young ones here, Lord. As they, Lord, really want to enter in that rest. They want to be burden free, Lord. They want to just ride on what you have done, Lord. They want to have the peace of God. Not just the peace with God, but the peace of God. My prayer is, Lord, this morning, that you will have mercy upon these people. Whatever is troubling their hearts, Lord. Whatever stress they are experiencing. Right at this very moment, I command in the name of Jesus that the peace of God, the rest of God will come into you and you enter into that rest with God. Begin to experience the peace in your life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I pray that you walk away from this place with the peace of God today. Roll it on to Jesus. And your children should be able to say, the secret of my mom and dad, he always rolls his burden onto the Lord. In the middle of the struggles, Jesus takes care of him. Hallelujah. We're going to the Lord's, the Lord's table. You know, when you really think about it, when you look at the table, you should feel so happy that we have a high priestess in heaven. We have a Savior in heaven. 
we have somebody who said i'll carry your burdens even today amen nammalodu varu ende swasthada yan ninakku tharam ninakku swasthada vannathu ende maranam mohandrava it's through my death you enjoy the peace amen i was forsaken and that's the reason you are accepted nee swigarikkapettathu njan kai vidapettathu unda hallelujah it's a time to remember the lord jesus and i pray as we take part from the lord's table that your heart will be filled with the joy of the lord thinking of the memories of our lord nammada kartavane kuru chindam nanni gratefulness let it fill your heart so for the sake of others who are new here this table is the lord's table if you have received christ as your lord and your savior and you have made that relationship very public by taking water baptism and you live in a life that is worthy of his name this table is yours if you are not saved if you are not been baptized you are not made that public i would ask you to please refrain stay away stay in prayer and pray that the lord will lead you uh, to an experience where you can take baptism or receive christ in your heart amen i'm going to do some